What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel what we're doing is the W205 or C300 automatic transmission uh, fluid change. So this has been a long awaited video. A lot of you have been asking for it for a long time. Uh, I let it go a little bit longer than I should have, but today we're gonna to show you exactly how it's done. So let's go inside and talk about exactly what we're gonna be doing first, and then we'll go to the shop and do it hands on. So stay tuned. All right, guys, first and foremost, I want to explain exactly how this transmission fluid change is done so that you get a better understanding of what you're about to do. I think this is really going to help out. Um, if you really don't care about it, I'll put something down below, uh, a timestamp of where you should go to the shop time. But um, this will show you the inner workings of it before you actually go and do the service. So I think it is very helpful. So this is for the W205. Uh, uh, this transmission is used in a lot of different models. So the transmission is a 722.9, the seven speed automatic is what we're doing today. Uh, it's used in a lot of different models. So you need to do your research on that. I'm not the end all say all on what it is, but let's go over the fluid change and exactly what happens here. So let's uh, draw out our transmission pan here. Okay, so you have a fill plug here, um, just Imagine this fill plug um, in when we go to the shop. I'll tell you exactly what size it is what different um, plug or uh, what different sizes you can use uh, now in or over this plug inside there's a little plastic um, Like basically a little plastic filler neck that looks like this. Okay, and it has an o-ring in it Just go ahead and draw the o-ring like that Okay, so this o-ring sits down on the actual pan. Now this thing is sealed. So what happens is you want the fill level of the water or the fluid to be above this fill neck. Okay, so in order for you to fill this, this is the only port to fill and drain the transmission. So that's why this fill port uh, or this filler neck exists, okay? So what we do at first is we put in a screwdriver, okay? You put your screwdriver in here, so a crudely drawn screwdriver, okay? But you stick your screwdriver up in here, flathead screwdriver, nice skinny one, and you're gonna push your screwdriver one way or the other. Now what you're gonna do is rock this little plastic piece off of its mount. So when you first open the drain plug, some fluid's gonna come out. Anything that's above this filler neck is going to come out, okay? Now, after you put your screwdriver in there and flip this over, you're gonna basically unseat this O-ring from its base. That's when all the rest of this fluid will drain out. It will not drain out until you kick this piece of plastic over and then this rest of the fluid drains out. Don't think that you can just take off the, the filler plug, let it drain out, and then take the pan off. Not going to happen. It's full of fluid, trust me. Uh, so there's, uh, I think we fill it with five quarts. So there's only about a maybe half a quart that comes out when you take the plug out. Don't be fooled. So that's what I wanted to explain to you guys before you actually go and do the service. Now, once we uh, fill it back up, that's where it gets a little bit more technical. You need a little adapter. So this is an adapter I bought off Amazon. Um, it's made by CTA Tools, uh, the number 7415, or rolling a picture here. This literally threads into the threads um, in the pan where the plug goes. And it allows you to, to hook up a, uh, a pressure vessel or something like a pump sprayer and you pump the fluid back in. So after we take the pan down, you'll see it in the shop, I will seat the filler neck back into its position. Then we will pump the fluid over and we will put the, uh, we will put the uh, filler neck on, we'll pump the fluid over and into the pan until it starts coming out again. Then we'll start the vehicle, make sure that it's getting through all the valve bodies, the transmission, the filter, all that stuff, warm it up, and then we make sure that it is to this fluid level when we're done filling. 
So let's head on over to the shop and let's uh, check this process out. I'll try to do it as best I can, explain some stuff, some helpful tips through the way. Let's do it. All right, guys, now we're underneath the car. Um, the easiest way to get at this is, is obviously to have it on a lift so that we can get underneath it. But we're gonna take off our transmission cover here. Um, these are all eight millimeter bolts. This is the cover that you would take off for standard oil change. <clears throat> And then we're gonna take off the cover in the back here to reveal the transmission. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take those off and then uh, we'll get back on here. All right, I, forget to, I forgot to hit record um, when I took the plug out, but you'll see that just um, the fluid will stop. Um, it won't drain out a lot of fluid here. Um, there is quite a bit, maybe two quarts, maybe a quart quart and a half um, will drain out before we knock over this uh, knock over this plastic piece all right so that was about it we're gonna go ahead and knock over this plastic piece and you'll see how much more will come out all I did was kick the screwdriver to an angle here um, and kind of pop it off so that the seal quits making a seal really guys so a lot of you don't have external torx sockets uh, this is an external torx uh, bolt if you can see it here um, a little hack for this is a 6.8 millimeter will fit on the bolt and it will allow you to do the job so if you don't have an external torx kit to take off these transmission bolts don't fret um, you can use it um, if you don't have a, a hex key adapter or a hex key uh, socket for the drain plug pan, you can use a Torx. Um, that Torx number is uh, a, a T40. So you can use a T40 to take off the drain plug, and then you can use an eight millimeter six point socket to take off the drain pan bolts. And these drain pan bolts actually hold little clips. All they are is a little aluminum clip that clips onto the side of the transmission pan. So the bolts don't go through the pan. They're literally just clips that clip on around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this pan, get it out of the way. We'll change the filter. I'll show you put it in the new gasket and then we'll put it all back together. All right guys, so we've taken the pan cover off. Now we're just gonna remove this uh, this uh, filter here. It literally just pop, pops out of place and then you have uh, a little bit of fluid that comes out of there uh, after you pop that out. But literally that's as easy as it goes for the filter. Um, it is full of a little bit of uh, transmission fluid, so be careful with it. All right, so now I wanna show you the pan from the inside. This is the plastic piece that we were talking about here. Um, you literally are just dislodging it to the side and that o-ring will quit doing its job in there so it literally just sits on there like that to ensure the the pan level is up past this uh, collar here when i put the screwdriver in all i did was dislodge it so that the fluid could go out around that o-ring that's the pan okay we're going to remove this gasket it's going to get replaced I'm gonna wipe the pan down, we're gonna put the new filter in, and we're gonna put the pan back up. How easy this pan gasket is to put on. It has a little lip here where it fits over the edge of the pan. So just go around the pan and make sure it fits all the way around and is seated on it, okay? Piece of cake. Now let's go up and put the new filter in. If you want, you can use some of this uh, transmission fluid to uh, lube up your, lube up your uh, little O-ring here on the filter really not that big of a deal. It'll still be dripping. You can use some of this stuff to lube up your, uh, your O-ring. Then you're literally just going to snap it up into place just like that and it will hang just like that. When you put the pan up, it will hold that up into place against the body. So that's how you install the new filter, piece of cake, all right? So now let's go ahead and put our pan back up in place. We're gonna put our, a couple bolts in to hold it and then we'll run them down. All right, guys, I always install the two on the edge. There's one on each corner and two on the sides. I always install those uh, first to make sure that the, the housing is, uh, or the drain pan is in a good position. 
and then uh, we'll go ahead and pl place the rest of them. So I have a power bleeder here. This is a Motive Products power bleeder. Um, it's usually for brakes. You want to make sure that the brake fluid's all rinsed out, and drained out, cleaned out. Um, we are gonna be using this ATF blue fluid, like I had explained before in a video. I'm gonna fill this little jug. All it does is have a pumper on it. So just like a pump sprayer, you pump it up and then it will discharge it out the hose. We'll hook the hose up to our adapter there at the transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up and then next uh, camera angle, you'll see me, we'll be pumping it into the transmission. All right, so I'm gonna start pumping this sprayer here, or it's not a sprayer, but I'm gonna start uh, pumping the bleeder here and you'll see the fluid start to enter the transmission here. Whoop and we're filling. I'll see you in five quarts. All right, guys, I pumped in just under five quarts here. So as you can see, once I've released pressure, um, it's still uh, draining back here. So what we wanna let it do is we wanna let it drain down here um, for a second. Um, it's not a lot, but it's still there. We're gonna go ahead and double verify. I've pumped it all in, let off pressure, and the fluid still comes back out. So that means that the fluid level is over our little uh, plunger up there. So now what we wanna do, uh, we're at a safe level to start the car. We wanna go ahead and warm it up to uh, its normal operating temperature, which just takes a, a couple minutes of idle. We'll hit it with the uh, temp gun here. I'm looking for about 150 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit and then uh, we'll ensure that um, it's full. I'll show you the sound that it makes uh, when you take this off after it's full. We're going to make sure it's full while it's running, not full while it's cold. All right, if you can see that, uh, the fluid's still coming out while it's uh, running. So we're gonna keep it pumped up, make sure that it's taking everything that it can. It can. We're gonna measure that, keep measuring this temperature. All right, we're at 100. It will warm up very, very quickly. All right, as you can see, we're still full over the filler line and we're at 130 degrees, 158 degrees. It warms up very, very quickly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure that we pump it up a little bit more, put a, the rest of it in there. We'll let off our pressure, see if it comes back again. All right, see it came back again, so we're still over full. Now, when you take this adapter off while it's running, it's going to gargle a little bit. You're going to want to hear a, um, a gargling noise, and you're going to let the rest of it drain off while it's running. It's kind of weird, but that's just how it is. All 
All right, it was overfilled quite a bit. All right, and that's it. It'll do it just like that. We'll put our, our uh, pan plug back in. All right, so that ensures we're at that level um, with it running when it's hot. All right, guys, so uh, five quarts was a little over full. It probably took uh, four and three quarter quarts. The rest of it drained out there. Um, but yes, you wanna ensure that you have enough of that fluid um, over top of that little thing while it's running until it's hot um, to satisfy everything it needs pumped through. And then once it's pumped through, uh, then we take it off and then boom, that's our level. We put it back together and that's it. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We'll put these covers back on and uh, we'll see you back at the Durbin compound. All right, guys, I hope you learned a lot from the video. I apologize for the audio. I really only had one chance at it and it turns out that the GoPro I was using is just messed up beyond all belief. So I tried to get it as good as I could on the computer in editing, but it is what it is. We had one shot at it and it just didn't stack up. So if you're still here in the video, I applaud you for sticking around. I hope that you learned something today. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them as fast as humanly possible. Um, but as always, I hope to see you click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.